I find myself scrolling for hours before bed despite telling myself just five more minutes. I work too late and obsess over emails long after the workday is finished. I lie in bed for hours each night staring at the ceiling with my mind racing. If you agree with any of these statements, you are not alone. We have spent the past two years completely obsessed with 5am wake ups. That girl morning routines, even the Huberman morning routine, but there is nothing out there about night routines. I have looked. So in this video, I'm going to take you through a four step evening routine backed by science that does three main things. First, gets me off my phone, away from work and into bed early enough to get up at 5.30. Second, turns my brain off and stops my overthinking. And third, leaves me energized, motivated and organized for the next morning. A big thank you to Shortform for sponsoring this video. When I first started uni, I got into a really bad habit. I was that person with four windows open on my computer at once, each one with 20 different tabs running. This meant I was also the person whose laptop was on overdrive, wearing 24 seven. In class, in my bag, overnight, even if I shut the lid or put it to sleep, the only way I could get it to shut off was to completely shut the computer down. Why am I telling you this? Well, our brains work a bit like a computer. Too many tabs open means that it will keep screaming at you even when you put it to sleep. The more things that you have on in your life, the more important that controlling this becomes. And as someone who balances two different jobs, uni and my side hustle, I have a lot of overhead. So based on the research that I've done, here is how I start my night routine to better manage this. Cal Newport, the author of Deep Work and Digital Minimalism, introduced me to a concept called a shutdown ritual. A series of habits to reduce stress and allow you to focus on things outside of work. Here is how I'm using it with my own spin, of course. Step one is getting current. I want to start by closing off any tasks that I'm in the middle of or writing a note so that when I go back to them tomorrow, I know exactly where I left off and what I have to do. I also update my master to-do list with any extra tasks that came up during the day. So if an extra assignment or a business idea came up that day, then I'll pop this onto my to-do list so I make sure that I don't forget about it. I'll also read over this master to-do list and make sure that anything urgent or anything with deadlines is scheduled in my calendar. This to-do list is honestly a lifesaver for me and I highly encourage you to get something of a similar nature. I'll put some resources in the description below that might help you get started with creating your own. So once everything is current and up to date, then step two is to get clear. I'll look ahead to my calendar and see what's on there for tomorrow that I planned at the start of my week. I'll then update this based on any changes that have happened and I'll make my time blocks more specific so I know exactly what I'm working on. I close all my tabs except what I want to work on first thing in the morning and this is especially helpful when I know that I'm going to wake up and get into work straight away because there's no chance for distractions and I can focus on the main task that I want to do. And this one isn't essential but it's something that has absolutely changed the game for my productivity and actually making progress. I write down one to three daily highlights. Now, daily highlights are your top priorities for the day. If you reached the end of tomorrow and reflected back on the day that you had, what would you have to have done that made that day successful? These highlights aren't just limited to work. They could be something urgent or something meaningful, something that brings you joy or leaves you satisfied. And really think about this. If you spent the next 365 days identifying your top three priorities each day and actually did them, imagine how good you would feel, how much progress you would make. This is the power of daily highlights. Step three is to get calm. Now, when Cal finishes his ritual, he says his magic phrase, schedule shutdown complete. This signals to his brain that he can switch off from work. And by this point, you should be comfortable knowing that nothing will blow up overnight if you close your laptop. You've checked your tasks, you've checked your calendar, you can now actually allow yourself to relax. So my phrase is chill mode on, and the more cringe that you can make this, the better. This shutdown ritual works because it does two things. The get current phase helps us to close all the tabs and windows that we opened in our brains during the day. It gives us peace of mind. It keeps us on top of our work all while making life for our future self easier. And doing the get clear phase tells our computer or our subconscious mind which tabs we're going to open tomorrow. Now, why is this important? Well, 
first, planning your day the night before has insane benefits. It closes open loops in your mind to reduce your mind racing and subconscious stress. This in turn boosts our sleep and increases our chances of having a productive day. You can learn more about these benefits in this video here. But this phase also does something else. Now our subconscious minds are on 24-7. When we sleep or let our minds wander, our conscious brain shuts down, but our subconscious brain is always running in the background. It's processing thoughts, working through problems and coming up with ideas. If you've ever had a shower thought or decided to sleep on a big decision and woken up with clarity then that is your subconscious mind at work this is an incredibly powerful tool that we can use when you plan your day your subconscious focus shifts to tomorrow so we can literally change our thoughts and find solutions to problems whilst we sleep since doing this I've had so many mornings where I've suddenly woken up with a new idea for a project a new perspective on an issue I was having or a greater resilience to deal with challenge and boredom your subconscious mind will be working either way so you you can either let it stay stuck on today or you can use it to help you prepare for tomorrow. Now, Cal Newport goes much deeper into this shutdown ritual in his book, Deep Work. I first read this a couple of years ago, but actually used Shortform, who is kindly sponsoring today's video, to refresh my mind on exactly what Cal says about his shutdown ritual. Shortform has been the biggest time saver in building my knowledge on productivity, business, and personal development. Instead of rereading a whole book, you can use the one page summary to understand the most important concepts then use the full guide to go deeper on certain areas that you're interested about so in their deep workbook summary short form actually suggests adding in a 15 minute period of reflection at the end of your day in your shutdown ritual this is based on a 2014 study which found that employees who did this habit performed 23 percent better at their work than those who didn't if you want to understand the books that you read at a much deeper level then you can go to my link shortform.com taylor to get a a free trial and a 20% discount on your annual subscription. Our prepare phase is all about setting ourselves up for success, creating positive momentum before we've even started the day and making it easier to stick to our good habits and start the day off on the right note. I am a strong believer that the first hour of your day sets the tone for the rest of the day, both the first hour after waking and the first hour of working. This means that we want to avoid three things in the first hour after waking up. Procrastination, snoozing the alarm, laying in bed on our phones, and and spending the first hour of our workday doing busy work and checking the news. Second, decision fatigue. Overloading our brains with choices of what to wear, what to eat, what train to catch, and what to do next. And third, stress. Shoving breakfast down, running out the door in chaos, always forgetting something. Procrastination, decision fatigue, and stress all drain our mental energy. They stifle our momentum, sabotage our productivity, and make it a lot easier to fall back into our bad habits. We want to switch these mental states to ones of focus and calm, of organization. These put us in a better mood and build momentum from the very start of our day. So our preparation phase is all about harnessing these mental states to increase our productivity, not just in the morning, but for the entire day. This really isn't complicated and won't take much time because we've already started this process when we did your shutdown ritual. We've planned our day and set our daily highlights. So the only other things that I add after this are laying my clothes out for the next day. If I'm out the next day, then I'll have my breakfast, lunch, and drinks ready and my bag packed. So if I'm working in the office, then I'll make sure that I've got my drink bottle, my laptop, my workout clothes, AirPods, and any important papers that I need. And if I'm home the next day, then I'll just make sure that my desk is tidy and ready to go for the morning. That's all I really need. You might have a few extra things depending on what you do with your work and your life, but simply ask yourself, what do I have to organize in the morning and of this what could I shift to my night routine? This one's pretty self-explanatory. By this point, you have finished your shutdown ritual and your preparation phase. We're set for tomorrow, so we can now focus on maintaining our well-being and setting ourselves up for a good night's sleep. Your essentials phase will probably involve something like brushing your teeth and doing your skincare. They seem really obvious, but make sure that you write them down. They still form part of your night routine and they're going to take up time. So if you forget to put them in, then that might be what's causing you to go to bed later. Later than you mean to. 
If you think back to your past week, how did you spend the 30 minutes before bed each night? Here's what the research tells us. According to the Sleep Foundation, 75% of people used at least one social media platform. 53% were watching TV and 17% checked their emails. They even claim that the average person spends 3 hours and 30 minutes on some kind of social media or online platform before bed. You know what else the research tells us? two in three adults have at least one sleeping problem. This isn't a coincidence. Everything that is easy to do, scrolling social media, watching TV, Netflix or YouTube or doing a quick work task, they all put our bodies into something called a sympathetic state, better known as our fight or flight mode. As you might imagine, sleep requires us to be in a calm state, our parasympathetic state or rest and digest mode. This is a state of calm that not only improves our relaxation but allows our body to heal and our mind to regenerate overnight. This is where our final phase comes in. Now by this point of your night routine you will likely be somewhere between your sympathetic and your parasympathetic state. We've closed our loops and prepared for tomorrow but you're likely still feeling a bit wound up so we need to fully activate our parasympathetic nervous system. The best way that I have found to do this is to make your 30 minutes before bed something that you look forward to but also something that isn't going to stimulate you. So the final 30 minutes of my night routine is reading a fiction book or a biography. Out of everything I've tried, this is something that I look forward to the most, but it also relaxes me. If you don't like reading, then here are some other ideas. You can do gratitude. You can have a warm shower. There's deep breathing, stretching or yoga, talking to a loved one, even listening to an audiobook or podcast. But again, I'd probably suggest something that isn't non-fiction. If you're someone who is always thinking and always on the go, then this 30 minutes is going to be your safe space. I know that 9 times out of 10, I am going to be reading for 30 minutes before bed and that is my time to just relax and let myself calm down. I know I've done my shutdown ritual, I know I'm prepared for tomorrow, I know that the essentials are done and now I can just allow myself to relax and get ready for sleep. There's three extra tips I want to mention, and these don't really belong anywhere specific, but they're still really important to consider in your night routine. Tip one is to stop eating two to three hours before bed. Now, I am really bad at this. I eat dinner very early, which means I almost always have something between dinner and bed. But way too often, the timing of this slips back too late. Suddenly, it's eight o'clock and I haven't had anything, but if I go to bed and don't have anything, then I'm going to be too hungry to sleep. This is an issue because eating too late works against our circadian rhythm, our internal body clock. When we sleep, our bodies need to focus on rest and recovery, not digesting food. So they basically shut down our digestive system to free up more energy to go towards our sleep. The result is that eating too late often causes digestive discomfort, issues falling asleep and lower quality sleep. So by moving our last meal or our last drink, if you drink alcohol, to two to three hours before before bed, we can reduce the negative effects of this. Tip number two is to stop drinking one hour before bed. And again, something I am really bad at. I'm a tea lover, so my peppermint tea with my book before bed is one of my favorite parts of the day. The main issue with this is that it can cause something called nocturnia, basically just needing to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. This isn't the end of the world, but these interruptions can impact our sleep cycle and prevent us from getting deep quality sleep, especially for some people. If you've found you've had issues with this, then increase your water intake throughout the day and try and reduce it after dinner and before bed. Personally, I'm going to start off with half a cup of tea before bed instead of a full one. Tip number three is consistency and iteration. Now, your night routine will create positive changes after just a few days. It really doesn't take long, but you will not find the perfect night routine for you in just a few days. The foundations, the four key phases that we went through, they are pretty much the same for everyone. But the specifics, how you close the loop, how you prepare for tomorrow and how you activate parasympathetic mode, they will be different for every single person. So here is my suggestion. 
follow the action steps that we're going to go through, try it for at least five days, and then start to iterate. Iteration is the process of doing something consistently, reflecting on what worked and what didn't, and then making changes to improve how you do it the next time. Learning how to iterate is one of the most valuable skills that you can develop. It applies to absolutely everything in life. If you can reflect and make small changes to improve everything that you do, then there is no way that you won't get to the point that you want in life. There is one thing almost every person misses and it leaves them in an endless cycle of either A, staying up too late and therefore not being able to wake up at the time they want to, or B, falling off track with their evening routine because they just don't have enough time. That thing is not setting a time to start your evening routine. I have a reminder set on my phone for 7.45 each night to go to bed, one and a half hours before I want to be asleep. Ideally, this would be two hours before bed, but that just doesn't feel manageable for me right now. So set a time that is realistic. This is how you will actually stick to it and not just ignore the alarm when it comes up. And something really important to note with this night routine is that phase one, close the loops, might be done separately to the rest of your night routine. I often work on uni or my side hustle in the evening. So my shutdown ritual comes at 7.45 as part of my evening routine. If you work a full-time job and you don't do any kind of projects or personal work afterwards, then you might want to make your shutdown routine at the end of your workday. Even if you do have your own projects going on, you might want to keep it completely separate and do a shutdown ritual after you finish work and then a mini one for your personal things that you do after work. There's no real one way to do it, so just see what feels best for you and go with that. So what time should you actually start? Well, that brings us to our action steps because you can't work out when to start until you know exactly what your routine will look like and how long it will take. Action step one is to define your routine. Now I have shown you exactly what my night routine looks like along with some extra bits of information along the way. This extra information is because by understanding why I'm doing these things and why I suggest you do them, you can actually adapt them to your personal circumstances instead of just trying to copy some evening routine you find on the internet. So what I want you to do now is to create an evening routine checklist. Write down the habits or steps in each of the phases of your evening routine. Phase one, close the loops. Phase two, prepare. Phase three, tick off the essentials. And phase four, activate parasympathetic mode. Make a note of whether you're going to do your shutdown routine at the end of your workday or the end of your entire day with the rest of your routine. Put this checklist somewhere that you can easily access, ideally not on your phone or computer, as we want to limit these before you go to bed. Action step two, is to test it out. So you've defined your routine. Now we want to work out two things. First, whether the routine actually works for you and it's something that you can stick to. And second, how long it actually takes. The first time you do your routine, allow a bit of extra time. You're going to go through your checklist and after each step, just make a quick note of how long it takes you. Come back to this list the next day after going to bed and add up how long it took you in total. Ask yourself whether this is something that you can do every night or whether you might need to take away a few less important steps. Remember as well that you'll probably get quicker over time. Action step three is to create your evening alarm. Now that you know how long your evening routine will take, work out what time you want to go to bed and count back from that time. So if I want to go to bed at 9.15 and my entire evening routine will take an hour and a half, then that means that my shutoff time is 7.45. I would highly encourage that you set an alarm on your phone for this time. And if you have an iPhone, then you can change the wind down time on your Apple Health to match the time that you want to start your night routine. This will remove all the notifications that you get and help you to resist the temptation of your phone before bed. Action step four is to follow the iteration process. Stay consistent for at least five days. Reflect on what is working and what needs to change. Improve by making small changes and repeat until you eventually arrive at your perfect evening routine. The best morning routine can't save you from a night of insomnia or a day starting in chaos. So in a world obsessed with morning routines, don't forget about the routine that sets the foundation for that morning routine to work. Let me know what you're going to do 
in that 30 minute period before bed in the comments below because I am extremely interested and I would love to know what everyone else does to wind down before bed. Thank you for being here and I'll see you in the next video.